me. You are listening to PT on Ice, the older adult, a collaboration between the Senior Rehab Project and the Institute of Clinical Excellence. This is a rebroadcast of an original episode that can be found at ptonice.com. Hello, everybody. Uh, Christina Previtt here. Uh, welcome to another edition of the PT on Ice podcast, Older Adult Edition. We are just wrapping up our first year of virtual ice. And so if you have been thinking about coming on to our virtual ice platform, now is the time to do it. We are turning over for year two into weekly meetings, which is super exciting. And all of the faculty is coming on board. So you're going to get a lot of depth and breadth of information across a lot of different areas of clinical practice. And we're all going to be kind of sharing ideas and getting some um, some insight into each other's uh, type of practice. Today, for the Older Adults Edition, I thought I would talk about something that um, has really been informative to me in my clinical practice. So um, for people who don't know on a personal level, um, I am an Olympic weightlifter in the 63 kilo weight class up here in Canada. And I am currently... Four, I had to count, four days away from um, my weightlifting national championships, which is super exciting, a little bit nerve wracking. And what that means is, is that my exercise and my training schedule has gotten a lot more intense. And so with that, it means that everything starts to become very precise. If anybody has been involved in weight class sports, or um, different types of athletics, you know that your body is trying to peak for a meet. Um, so for different athletes who have a season, they're trying to make sure that their body is ready and resilient enough to perform very well at the championships or the playoffs. So you can really um, perform on those big games. For Olympic weightlifting, um, I need to peak my strength for um, for Sunday because that is like the creme de la creme of my athletic season and then I go into off season. The reason why this relates to physical therapy and geriatric physical therapy is that over the last couple of weeks, because I've been pushing it so much, I started to experience a little bit of lateral quad tendinopathy bilaterally with my left being worse than my right. And that is an interesting thing. Um, when you're starting to know that you're experiencing overuse injuries, you're a physical therapist, so you know what that means. But I'm also an athlete who recognizes that I can't necessarily slow down because if I am slowing down, um, then my peak might be off and I might not be performing at the top level that I need to when I go into um, my session on Sunday. So as a physical therapist, we recognize that when we're seeing overuse injuries, we're trying to get a certain amount of rest, then we're loading in safe positions, and we're gradually increasing the strength and resiliency of the tendons. As an athlete, especially with Olympic weightlifting, I realize that I need to take the bar down as heavy as I can, lay, uh, get into the very bottom position of a squat, and with kind of hip flexor lateral tendon pain going on, it hurts in the bottom position of my squat, and I need to stand up. And so what do you do? And if I go, if me in my athlete brain, if I was to go to a physical therapist or any rehabilitation specialist and said, you know, I'm going into this meet and this is what's kind of happening. And the PT was to say to me, well, we need you to back off. We need you to do all this stuff. You need to stop. My body or my brain would shut down. I would say, you know, that's just not possible. And then I would stop listening to recommendations, whether that's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. Um, I recognize that, you know, as a PT, we're trying to think about reducing pain and improving function. But as an athlete, stopping and not training and taking a break is just not an option for me right now. It is something that I'm not even going to consider doing. And even being a PT and knowing some of the pathophysiology and etiology of some of these overuse injuries, I wasn't going to do it. And so... 
my PT brain, I started working on the things in mobility and recovery that I could control. I started making sure, you know, I always make sure that my nutrition is optimal, but I also made sure that I was spending a little bit of extra time on recovery and mobility, whether that was soft tissue work. I started doing some isometric quad work to try and make sure that the um, the strength in my lateral quads were doing okay. I was getting blood flow to that area. I was making sure that I was doing range of motion, that my warm-ups were appropriate. I was putting the onus on me to do all of the things that I could control that I would tell my athletes if they were in the middle of their season and we couldn't get them to rest to do. What that means is that I have a frame of reference. So if I have an athlete, a young athlete, a master's athlete, an athlete who is in their 60s in the middle of their pickleball season, I understand that unless we really need to, I am going to try and figure out ways to allow them to complete their season with the intention that when I deload next week, now I go into full rehab. So as I'm done on Sunday, I'm managing my symptoms as best as we can. And then on Sunday night, when I finish, then I go into rehab mode. And those are the conversations that I have with a lot of my clients. And how this transfers over to geriatric physical therapy, I was talking with the modern management cohort last night about this. Sometimes when we get older and some of our orthopedic injuries are more degenerative in nature, the idea of getting us 100% pain-free is just not a realistic goal. And I hate admitting that. I don't like the idea that, you know, that being absolutely pain-free is going to not be a realistic expectation for some of my older clients. But unfortunately, sometimes that is the reality. And so telling them to rest or just like a PT would say to me to avoid those things that hurt when those things that hurt can be activities of daily living or things that they need to be able to accomplish every single day to make them feel good and feel like they are maintaining their independence. It, it's, it's a conversation that we need to have. And sometimes we need to, to work a little bit into that low grade pain in order for them to be able to maintain their functional ADLs and their IADLs. And so this is how it relates, right? So as an athlete, I recognize that I am going to be experiencing a little bit of pain with some of my activities. And I have had a conversation with um, the PT that I'm consulting with. And I've accepted that and then re recognized that in different periods, for example, different seasons, you know, after gardening season, going into the winter, we can get a little bit, we can back off a little bit of the kneeling if the pain in the knees is getting a little bit intense for some of my older clients. Recognizing that that low grade pain is going to be there and then doing everything that we can to optimize function, reduce pain as much as we can and allow the person that is seeing us to do the things that they want to do as safely as possible. And for me, that's been a big learning experience is that when we're in geriatric physical therapy, we are always thinking about safety and function. And for example, with falls prevention, we are always thinking, okay, we need to reduce falls, we need to reduce falls, we need to reduce falls. But sometimes the best way to reduce falls is essentially bubble wrap a person and make them sit still and that's not ethical. That's not the way that we would want to live our lives when we are in our 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s. And recognizing that the person in front of you is allowed to accept a certain amount of risk for either an injury getting worse, for a fall happening down the line, you know, acknowledging that you have had that conversation, said, for example, with me, a tendinopathy, you know, Ideally, we would be resting and avoiding irritating activities and gradually strengthening and loading the tendons as appropriate is the best way. But right now, you are in your season. This is what we have to do to manage. 
The same conversation happens with some of my older clients who are recognizing as an increased risk for falls is borderline in terms of being able to safely complete ADLs and IADLs, but recognizing that that person is allowed to accept that amount of risk. And us as PTs, we can't control their environment all the time. We can't stop them from doing the things that they want to do in their life. We can just have the conversation about risk. We can acknowledge that low-grade pain may be there, try to strengthen or try to use manual therapy interventions to reduce that pain, increase that function, increase that resiliency, and then go from there and just try and work around where our client is at, where our athlete is at in terms of their season, in terms of their lifespan, in terms of the things that they really want to do. And then we are helping to facilitate. There's a couple of things that if you know me, you are going to recognize that I will say over and over and over again. Um, one is that your body needs to be strong enough to handle what you're asking it to do. So for me as an athlete with my ovaries injuries, I obviously overdid it and my body broke down because I was asking too much of it. It's, it's kind of common, especially when we're getting into a, that really busy season. So that is true for a lot of my geriatric physical therapy clients. So your body, especially as we get into our 50s, we start to see a decline in strength that accelerates over 70 and power uh, decreases faster than raw strength does. The second one, though, that's really important, and I say you are my client. If I'm talking to my client, I'm saying you are in the driver's seat of your healthcare system and I'm in the passenger seat. And so sometimes I'm a little bit more of a backseat driver. I'm a little bit more, you know, forward with my recommendations. But ultimately, I'm not the one who decides to turn left or right. You are. You are the one who decides to do your exercises or not. You are the one who who acknowledges that there is risk but takes the left turn anyway. And so my insight as an athlete has really guided and led to me really reflecting on the conversations that I'm having with my clients, whether they're 25 or 85, around what they want to do in their life and where they're at in their journey and trying to work with them to optimize their ability to do everything that they want to do. I'm going to finish up this PT on ice with a book recommendation. I give this to every single one of my students who comes into Stave Off and is working with a lot of my clients. It's called Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. And he talks about our aging process and the directions that we can take as we start to see declines in function. And it gave me a lot of insight into, you know, taking some of these athletic conversations and translating them into geriatric physical therapy and really working with acknowledging that what the healthcare system may see as a successful aging outcome may not necessarily be what my 75-year-old client who loves golfing, who's try, who's right now being forced by family to try and go into a retirement home, and he doesn't feel ready for that. And so what do we do as healthcare providers to not only help to facilitate and optimize function for our clients and be conscientious of some of the the healthcare decisions that are being made by the family and the caregivers and kind of going from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's a little bit of insight into some of the things that I think about as an athlete and then as a therapist on the other side of the table. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So if you guys are interested in hearing a little bit more about some of the geriatric physical therapy uh, world, we are starting a third cohort of the Modern Management of the Older Adult, June 12th. I think our first meeting is actually June 10th. So if you are interested, sign up. The link for the PT on uh, the course, sorry, is going to be below in the comments section. And you guys are all awesome. And we will have a wonderful Wednesday. So happy hump day. And uh, we will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Bye. Hit me. Thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, go to ptonice.com, click on the courses tab, and check out Modern Management of the Older Adult. This is a course that myself and Christina Previtt are going to be teaching. It's eight weeks, an online format, interactive, and solely focused on helping students change how they practice and how they work with older adults. For more information, just go to ptonice.com.